First big problem is that you have put a lot of people above you. Put no one above you. Yeah. No one. I put God above me. Besides that, there's no one better than me. If you're playing Roger Federer, before you get on the court with Roger Federer, he's the best of all time. But you're also a professional tennis player, yeah. man. You're forgetting your own fucking resume. So once you get on the court, let's say it's a grand slam. It's five sets. Hopefully, yeah. if you can go the distance with this yeah. guy. But before you even bounce the ball to serve it, you're down two sets. Because why? You look across and you're playing Roger Federer. But guess what? You hit a good shot on Roger Federer in the third set. And you realize, I can play with this mother But it's too late. You gave up two sets before you got on the court. You got to stop giving up two sets before the game begins. And we do that already. We give up two sets before the game begins. So I learned that real quick. I saw these Navy SEALs before I became one. My God, they're better than me. Yeah. They're better than me. I gave up a hundred sets. And I had to work up to realize these are human beings with the same shit I have. Yeah, this, some people run faster, swim better, but mentality is mentality. There's no, I, you're not gonna outwork me. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna catch up somewhere. Yep. So that being said, I used all that 300 pound man, that fat guy, that dumb guy. And people say, why do you say dumb? You have to be real yep. with you yourself. Be oh. If you're not smart, you're yep. dumb, yep. but you can become smart. You can become smart. It's not a permanent tag. You're dumb forever. You're fat forever. No, be raw. Don't find the cushy word. So what I did with all this stuff is I realized, okay, here it is. This is what you are, David. But now check this out. I sat back and I was like, my God, I, I'm, I'm able to visualize years beyond where I'm at right now. How are you gonna feel if you can pull this off? And I got the, the, the idea to become a Navy SEAL. Mm -hmm. At 300 pounds, hate the water, can't run down the fucking block, horrible. And I put everything on that. My whole life was, I'm gonna be a Navy SEAL, come hell or high water. Who does that? Yeah. You gotta commit to it. You gotta put everything on yourself. You gotta sit back and be able to imagine mm -hmm. where you wanna be and be like, that's the power. If I can pull this off, what kind of story have I just created? So we get scarred. And the thing about it is like, if you were in, a, in the kitchen and you're cutting up cucumbers, yep. you cut your finger. It happened 30 years ago. That scar is still there. They say, what happened to your finger? Guess what you do? I was in the kitchen one day, I was cutting up cucumbers, you know, cut my finger. Yep. You have those scars in your fucking brain from life. We try to hide those scars. We don't want to go back and revisit it. Mm -hmm. This is not as simple as a cutting a cucumber. Mm -hmm. So I started realizing that my life was causing a whole bunch of scarring on my brain. And I had to go back and really break open that scar and let it bleed. But a lot of us have scars in our brains about f***ed up lives, bad childhoods, bad adulthood, whatever the f*** you're going through. Those scars in your brain, we don't talk about. We hide. Scarring is proof that our past is real. But the one thing we do is we allow to control our lives and we get off the log. Well, it's time to get back on the log and not have those scars define the rest of your life. Sometimes you gotta fight pain with pain. Stay hard. When I was a young kid, I considered myself very weak. Very weak. And as I started developing this indestructible mental toolbox. Because what I realized was the things I was like most afraid of, I cowered from. Mm -hmm. I had to start facing these things and becoming an expert at the things I feared the most. Yeah. I was afraid of my own mind. My mind would get off on these crazy places of woe is me. Mm -hmm. my, my internal conversation wasn't great. Yeah. So I had to start mastering it. Once I started mastering it, in the horrible place I was at, I was literally, I considered myself the worst person ever alive. That was my conversation. But once I started mastering my own life, I started realizing, my God, man, this was in me? Yeah. I was a 300 pound fat guy. Now I'm 181 pounds, 190 pounds, whatever it was. I'm gonna go through all these hell weeks. Mm -hmm. So I started realizing the capabilities of the human soul and the human mind. A lot of people ask me, how the hell do you gain mental toughness? Well, how you gain mental toughness? Only way to do it is to do things that don't make you feel good and do things that you might fail at. When you fail at something or you don't do your best, that's how you gain mental toughness, by getting back in the fight, not stopping. Stay hard. 
So I call it in my book here, it's called the accountability mirror, but it's called raw accountability. Yeah. Not just accountability where we find that nice happy word. If you're fat and you look in the mirror and you say, wow, I eat a little too much. No, you're f***ing fat. You have to make a list yeah. of the things that you don't like to do. This list should be very long. Like if you don't like making calls, the very first thing you should do is start making a shit ton of f***ing calls. Because why? That begins to own you. You start to drive yourself this way versus this way. It, but you'll figure out, if you start making a whole bunch of f***ing calls, if you like calling, call a lot. Guess what happens? You get over it. You get over it. So what we do a lot is, I, I heard a lot of people say, triple down on this, triple down on most of your strength. Yeah. No, 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 no. That works for a lot of things. But when you're afraid and you don't have the courage, you have to triple down on your weaknesses and make that become where you start to guide yourself. Okay, I don't like calling. Today I'm making 100 calls. I'm gonna dial 100 times. What happens is, when I was younger, life and society made this big world with all these endless fucking possibilities. Yep. Endless possibilities. My life made my possibilities this fucking big. Yep. Because it made me afraid of all these different things. Yeah. So. All this stuff trapped my mind, it shackled my brain, it made me a prisoner within my own self, saying, mm -hmm. this is all I can do. Because why? I'm afraid of this, I'm insecure over here, I got self down over here, back behind me, good Lord, who knows what's behind me? I'm like, look behind me. So your life is this big. Versus it being like, I can do all this shit out here if I start to break down these, ball, you know, these, these, these different walls and barriers. And that's what I started realizing. I could become a Navy SEAL. I could become this, but I was afraid of the water. Think about this. Why the f are you gonna go be a Navy SEAL when all you do is play in the water? Yeah. For And we don't play, we're in it and we're living in it. Just, the ocean is unforgiving. Yeah. So my yeah, mind yeah. is, I'm gonna go be a Navy SEAL. If I didn't face that fear, no one would ever know me. I was number three behind Michelle Obama for a long time until my book sold out. Yeah. And I was a guy just, 21 years ago, yep. who was 300 pounds, could barely read and write, mm -hmm. and now I have a book just two spots behind Michelle Obama, just because I was afraid. But you overcome those fears, guess what happens? The whole world, you unlock this door and everything opens back up again. I work with a guy who's in a business like this for five years. I'm not gonna mention his name. Yeah. He called me up five years ago and said, I want you to work with me. Yeah. His job, a big day for them was if you had five meetings and 40 calls, $40. That was like, according to their big business plan, that was a day. He said, I want to make more money. Um, all this shit's just bugging, you know, it's, just, it's bogging me down. I said, this is your day? Five meetings and 40 calls? And, and this company you work for says that this is a great day? This is what we want? I had this guy, no shit. One day, mm -hmm. he made a thousand cold calls and had seven meetings. Yeah. So his new norm, which is now the company, like how, how'd you become? He made a hundred thousand, mm -hmm. went to making six hundred thousand dollars in three years. Yeah. That's that's the jump he had, just because his mindset changed because the company put this shit. This is what is a good day. A good day is forty calls, five meetings. I said. That's a fucking bullshit day because you're comparing yourself with mediocre people. Yeah. Do not run with mediocre people. I'm gonna tell you how to beat these mediocre people. This is your new 300 dials and eight fucking meetings. Yeah. And his whole world changed. Now 300, just another day. It's a Tuesday. So it's, just, it's just the mindset change where don't look at something, like for instance in Hell Week. That's you're talking sweet. about 130 I mean, hours of training. Yeah. It starts on Sunday, ends on Friday, and on Wednesday, you're almost done, you're halfway through. They said, when you get to Wednesday of Hell Week, you're broken. So everybody on Wednesday, they hear this, because everybody says Wednesday is like, man, you're so tired, you're done. Mm -hmm. So that becomes your new norm. No, because someone told you you could feel tired. Bingo. Bingo. So for me, I was like, hang on a second. I started studying my mind a whole bunch while growing up, mm -hmm. facing these things. Don't listen to anybody's dialogue but your own. They're tired, yeah. they're not you.